Hello, I want to spend a few minutes talking about silicone polymers. I have a few examples of silicone polymers here. We have some uh, short chain silicone um, that uh, flows a little bit. Um, we have some silicone caulk and both in the tube and uh, this little bead of caulk right here. And uh, some silicone that we produced in our lab from a kit, and actually this is one of the components of the kit. But let's talk a little bit about silicone chemistry. Uh, a lot of, there are a lot of silicones that exist. Um, what we often refer to when we refer to silicones is a specific compound called polydimethylsiloxane, uh, where we have a silicon oxygen backbone in the polymer chain and there's two methyls on each silicon atom in that, in that chain. To make polydimethylsiloxane, what people often do is they take this compound, this dichlorodimethylsilane, uh, and react it with water. And what happens is the hydrogens combine with the chlorines to make hydrochloric acid. The oxygens link to the silicons and make this chain with this repeating silicon oxygen, silicon oxygen, silicon oxygen backbone. Now, if we make short chains of this, as I showed, this it actually makes sort of a viscous liquid, okay? And what's happening in that liquid is, as it flows is that the chains of silicon and oxygen are sliding past each other. Now, if we can figure out how to link these chains together by uh, structures called cross links, what can happen is we can prevent those chains from sliding past each other. And if we were to take this viscous liquid and cross link it, we form this rubbery solid material. Okay, and this, indeed that's how we actually did that. So, um, and it's a similar idea with uh, caulk. Okay, caulk gets squeezed out of tube, it's sort of liquid like. Okay, but after a time, it cross links to produce this sort of rubbery solid material. So, there are a couple different techniques for cross linking the polymers together. In the case of, of a caulk like this, what is often used is a cross-linking technique like this, where we have on some of the silicons, instead of methyls, we have these sorts of groups here, okay? And if I have a silicon attached to this group here and a silicon attached to the same type of group over here, um, this will react with water and sometimes a tin compound is added to help the reaction along. It's a catalyst. And what happens is the silicon combines with the oxygen from the water and bridges over to another silicon and links these silicons together. And what happens is the hydrogens from the water attach themselves to these groups which leave and this is actually acetic acid. Okay, and you may notice that some forms of caulk, like this one here, smells a bit like vinegar uh, when it comes out of the uh, out of the tube here. Well, that's because it's reacting with moisture in the air and producing that acetic acid. That that uh, that's what gives vinegar its smell. All right, there's another type of curing or cross-linking chemistry um, that is sometimes used. Now, I should point out that. There are, in this form, there are other chemical groups we can use if we don't want to make vinegar here, but there's another totally different type of chemistry that's used. Um, and that's what's used for this example here. Uh, what we have in these liquids, this liquid is, uh, we can have um, a silicon attached to a carbon, double bonded to another carbon. There's hydrogens on the carbon. And there are other reactive groups that can be part of the 
use the kit that's used to make this, or we have a silicon directly attached to a hydrogen. Now when these two are put together and put together in the presence of a platinum catalyst this time, what happens is this silicon hydrogen bond breaks, okay, and the silicon attaches to one of the carbons and the hydrogen attaches to the other carbon. And one of these carbon carbon bonds breaks. And so when in the end we have a silicon with a carbon carbon all singly bonded to another silicon. And so this is another type of cross link. And uh, the hydrogens go and move into position like that. And so again, something like this opposed to something like this. And this is actually something we use in our in our research lab. This is a commercially available kit of polydimethylsiloxane. But what we do is we take some of this cross-link polymer and we add a palladium compound, this tetrachloropallidate. And it turns out inside this polymer there's a few silicon hydrogen uh, bonds that have not broken. They're left over from the cross-linking process. And we add the palladium compound to it. It reacts to make palladium metal, which is very finely divided, as palladium nanoparticles. And it turns out palladium nanoparticles are black. Okay. And in the bottom of this file here, we have some of this silicone with palladium nanoparticles embedded in it, and you can see that they appear to be black in this file. Uh, we think what's happening is this reaction takes place as some of the chlorine combines with hydrogen to make hydrogen, hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid. And uh, some of the rest of the chemistry we haven't, uh, I haven't quite worked out yet, but um, you can see this little vial here has a bit of a red dye here. We call that methyl red. Okay. And um, what we can do is we can add hydrogen gas to that vial. Um, recently we used a, a solar cell to uh, drive an electrochemical cell to dry, produce hydrogen gas. And we bubbled hydrogen gas into a vial like this and it turned colorless. Okay. And that's because palladium does a wonderful job of picking up hydrogen. Okay. And it can take the and other compounds that come in contact with that palladium that's been in contact with the hydrogen. Um, can pick up those hydrogens from the palladium and different reactions can be catalyzed by those palladium nanoparticles. And there's all sorts of different things that can happen. You can take a carbon-carbon triple bond and go to a carbon-carbon double bond by adding hydrogen. A carbon-carbon double bond can pick up more hydrogen and become a carbon-carbon single bond. In the case of this uh, methyl red decolorization here, what we think is happening there's a nitrogen-nitrogen double bond, which breaks to produce what we call a couple of amines here, with the hydrogens attached to the nitrogens. And uh, uh, one of our other research lines is looking into taking chlorines attached to carbon and removing them and attaching hydrogen, where the chlorine combines with another hydrogen to produce hydrogen chloride. So there's all sorts of interesting chemistries that we can do involving polydimethylsiloxane, which is a form of silicone.